a lot of people know Pride and Prejudice already, so we have to kind of break whatever image that the audience has in their minds, and on top of that, as the actors, we have to break whatever image we have in our minds of how it should be performed. It's more difficult in the early stages of rehearsal because you don't have all the elements together quite yet, like costumes, props, set pieces and everything. So for me, it really came together once we were in the big hoop skirts or the corsets and everything. Those were a lot of fun. Costume is very important for acting and accent and all the little prop pieces around us because the more that we have, the more real it becomes. You know, acting's not about pretending, it's about empathy, it's about being and, and trying to unite our unique selves with the unique self of the character in a way that, that is it's magical to the audience where they lose you in the character. Darcy is very much, he's not a very expressive guy, but when you first meet him, it's very much like, hmm, like, you know, raise eyebrows on everybody else, like everyone's lower than me. Darcy's got this emotional wall around him, and it's when he sees Elizabeth for the first time, those walls start to come down. He starts to smile a little bit more. He's more, like, friendly, and it's like, oh, like, who is this guy? Mrs. Bennet is, like, the villain, in a sense. You can take a villain many different ways. And so, personally, for me, I found that it's about that she wants to be perfect because that's what she cares most about. Having the perfect family, living in the perfect society, in the perfect house with the perfect husband. And so then she becomes kooky because she's not achieving this perfection. She becomes like crazy intense serious because she's not achieving the perfection. I could relate a lot to him as far as he would kind of confront his vexations with dry humor. Instead of getting angry, like, shut up, Mrs. Bennett, he would just make a dry joke. And I admire the way that he uses humor as sort of a tool to deal with frustration and, and the stress of being the patriarch of a family. Jane has this way about her that's so kind and caring. She wants her family to be happy, she wants her friends to be happy, but also she wants her own happiness in the end. There's so many elements of acting that goes into a performance. Trying to prepare for this show was difficult with the accents and everything, but I was taking voice and speech this quarter, so that really helped me with preparing for the role. Professor Eski from acting classes, he always uses this term of, it has to feel lived in. Like, this is your house that you walk into every single day. How do you walk into your house? Do you walk in all like intense and like, oh, I've never been in this place before? No, you walk in super comfortable, you know, where you take your shoes off, you have your favorite spot on the couch, you know, you have all these little habits that you have. And accents really build it up because then it becomes, it really affects everything. You have to think about what is the class, you know, because the class defines the accent. It all depends on where you're from. Yeah, it's one nation, but there's so many different parts of it and each part has its own defining characteristic. Like for instance, Jack Volpe did this amazing over the top, like Sir William Lucas, like he's very proud of his knighthood and that works because he's a knight. Um, you have like, you know, Dominic and I trying to do a posh British accent because we're higher class. It very really much depends on character and like, you know, trying to find the way how that accent works for it. Overcoming our prejudices obviously is a theme, more lighthearted in this play than it would be if it was about like, you know, racial prejudice or something, but it all goes hand in hand. Assumptions um, are a very dangerous thing and we have to try to transcend those assumptions and get to know people on a more intimate, sincere level and then, then base our relationships off of that. Pride and Prejudice worked so well because it's a good mixture between a drama and a comedy. You have all the serious moments between Darcy and Elizabeth, and then you interrupt that with like Mrs. Bennett, and then like Mr. Collins coming up or whatever. Like Ian did this fantastic thing where he like when he before he knows I'm Catherine de Bourgh's nephew, he grabs me with a cane, and that was just like you know like improv on the on the performance, but it worked because it was like you diffuse that tension of like you know like oh like you know like yes there's everything serious going on, but remember there's other people that are fully fleshed out and have their own quirks and stuff like that. Every night, getting in that cowl really gets you into character. For me, it happened with the wig. I, I was a redhead and I was like, this is happening. My favorite costume that she made was Farquaad's costume. Farquaad's costume, she built it from scratch and uh, it, it involved Ian walking around on his knees and she built like miniature legs.